When God has been faithful to you, go ahead and just clap your hands to the Lord and celebrate his faithfulness. God is always faithful, even when I'm not. He's always remains faithful to us. We're so glad that you're here. Look around you and just tell your neighbor, I'm so glad that you're here. So glad you're here. You could be any place in the world, but you're here in God's presence. Amen. My name is Joe, and I pastor at the Arrowhead Campus in downtown San Bernardino. And we have a crazy bunch down there too, Pastor, just not as many. There's a lot of, a lot of crazies here. As we prepare for Christmas, and you can sit down if you'd like to. As we prepare for Christmas, the Lord reminded me of a, of a, of a story that took place a few months ago, or about a month ago. Downtown, um, before service, at certain times, I, I do what's called an open-door policy. And what that means, I tell the, the, the doorkeepers to leave all the doors open to, to go and lead into my office. I want them wide open. And the reason why I do that is because I enjoy talking to people. And you'd be surprised what type of people walk through that door. They want to talk. Now, I can't get a chance to talk to everybody, but during open door policy, uh, anyone can walk in and talk about anything that they, that's on their mind. And, and I, I love doing that. I love the conversations. And I remember uh, last month, uh, a, a little child came in and... She said, what are you doing, Pastor Joe? And I said, I'm working. What are you doing? She said, nothing. I said, it must be nice. <laughs> I continue just to look like I'm working. I'm really not working. I'm, I'm, I'm just talking. And she said, I can't wait for Christmas. I said, you can't wait for Christmas? Why? And she said, she looked, like, looked at me like I was crazy. What do you think? The presents. I said, the presents? Why do you get presents at Christmas? It ain't your birthday. And she looked at me like mad. She was mad, Pastor. She, she said, Jesus wants me to have presents, Pastor Joe. I said, oh, I can't argue with that. <laughs> He certainly wants to bless you. But what the Lord reminded me of those words that she said was, I can't wait. It got real quiet right there. Because when we can't wait is when we lose our bearings. We lose our focus. It's the number one reason why marriages fail. Couples can't wait. For God to groom and mature the, the, each other. So they abandon marriages. It's the number one reason why people leave the church. They can't wait. They're not getting promoted fast enough. They're, they're not given the ministry fast enough. Uh, nobody's recognizing them. And, and they can't wait, so they abandon the church. So tonight we're going to answer or attempt to answer this question. Why is God making me wait? Why is God making me wait? How many of you are here waiting on, on God to answer you for something? In Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31, the Bible reads like this. It says, but those who wait... Somebody said, wait for it. Look at your neighbor and tell him to wait for it. Those who wait on the Lord. Come on, somebody. Who are you waiting on? Those who wait on the Lord. Watch this. 
shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Where are my eagles at tonight? That didn't sound like eagle call. That, that was like a pheasant or something. That was a different one. They shall mount up like wings, like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. Man, I wish sometimes I get in the treadmill, I, I can't run 30 seconds. I abandon that thing and go to get on a machine where I can lay down. <laughs> they shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. The Lord provides certain types of renewed strength to all those who wait upon him. And the reason why he does that is because it takes faith to wait. It takes more faith to wait and to go through a problem than it does to escape it. So we need to stop looking for the easy way out of our problems. We need to stop looking for shortcuts. The easy way is seldom the best way. Jesus said, difficult is a road that leads to life. And there are only a few who take it. The Lord's way is the best way. Shout if you agree. Even if it means I must wait upon him. Waiting is the place in between the time that God promises you something and the time that it arrives. God promises you something in his word and you, and you have to wait for it to come to pass. A portion of our faith and being a Christian is centered around waiting. In other words, faith has a waiting room. And some of us are in that room right now. Just by a show of hands, how many of you here today are waiting for certain family members to get saved. Keep your hand up. How many of you in this room are waiting for your marriage to turn around? Keep your hand up. Everyone hand just keep your hand up. How many of you are waiting for a miracle, for a healing, for a breakthrough? How many of you are waiting for a vision to come to pass? How many of you are waiting for financial blessing? I know you ran out of hands. Put a foot up. We go from faith to faith. From one waiting room to another. We are all waiting. We are all believing. Believing for something to happen, something to change, something to shift. If you're not expecting anything to happen, it probably won't happen. I am always waiting on God to move. It is part of being a Christian. I, I ask according to the promises and the will of God, and then I wait for it to come to pass. But I have no problem waiting because I know what he said in his word will happen. I waited four years to get delivered. Why did it take so long? 
because I had a lot of demons. I went through numerous deliverance sessions. And God taught me how to fight each one over the course of those four years. And how to have victory over each one through the waiting period. I didn't get to go to the altar and get oil on my head and get free. It didn't happen for me. Maybe it happened for you. Praise the Lord. But that's not the way it happens for most. Most people have to go through the waiting process. I had to wait five years for a wife. Five years of remaining pure. Five years of trying to be holy. Five years of dealing with the spirit of lust. So when you tell me you've been waiting five months, I'm sorry. I have no sympathy for you. I waited 10 years for a driver's license. A grown man with a beard walking and on the, on the city bus, bumming rides from people. Old ladies used to pick me up and take me to church. <laughs> Tattooed, bald, crazy looking. Riding with an old lady to church. Because I had no license. It took me 12 years to get a good paying job. I worked at a car wash. I was a janitor. I had these little jobs that didn't pay much. Because I was waiting for the good job. I had to wait 35 years to meet my dad for the first time. I waited 28 years to become a pastor. I'm so glad that I waited because now I'm the pastor of the greatest church in America. If you're waiting on the Lord, you are not alone. David waited 15 years from the time he was anointed to the time that he became king. Abraham waited 25 years to bear his son Isaac. Jacob waited seven years to marry Rachel. Moses waited 40 years to prepare for leadership. Rebecca waited 20 to give birth to Jacob. And Jesus Christ waited 30 years to have a ministry that would only last three. So why can't you wait? If everyone else has to wait, why do you have a problem with waiting on the Lord? The problem of waiting on the Lord is that no one likes to wait at all. Especially when it comes to waiting on God. Because in my experience, it seems like God is simply not in a hurry. Do you remember when Lazarus died? The Jesus, oh my gosh, we got to get there. Jesus did not panic. He waited even a couple days. He was good and dead. God is seldom in a hurry. The Bible says, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their The two words that stand out in that scripture, the word wait and the word renew. The word wait means to remain in expectation. To remain in what? Expectation. expectation. I'm waiting, but I'm expecting God to show up. Right. I'm looking around the corner at every service, at every class, at every moment. I'm waiting for God to respond. 
It means to endure to the end. It means to be made strong. It means to be threaded or woven together. It means to be tension tested, to be stretched. God is building elasticity in you while you are waiting on him so that you don't break under pressure, so that you don't quit when the times get difficult and the seasons get hard. God is creating you to be flexible, to be pliable, to be unmovable while you wait. The word renew, it means to constantly change for the better. I'm being renewed. I'm getting better and better and better and better as life goes on. It means to be replenished, to be refilled and strengthened over and over and over again. It's not a one-time thing. God is continuously strengthening you through the waiting process. And you get new strength for new problems and new challenges God gives you the power to overcome while you are waiting. And as you're waiting, the Lord is developing you. He's shaping you. While you're waiting on the outside, God is working on the inside. God is working in you so that someday he can work through you. Is anyone hearing me today? Come on. So let's look at this story about this man who waited correctly. And hopefully we can identify why God is making me wait. Luke chapter 2, verse 25, it begins and reads like this. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous. All the men are like, That's me. he's talking about me. <laughs> he was righteous. He was devout. Devout means deeply committed to God. Are there any men here deeply committed to God? Three are unsure and five uh, didn't say anything. He was committed to God. And watch this. He was eagerly what? Waiting. He was waiting. Waiting for what? Waiting for the Messiah to come. To come. For waiting for Jesus to come. To come and do what? To come and rescue him. To come and save him. To come and save Israel. To come and rescue his family. To help his family. To help his people. To help his city. To rescue his nation. He was waiting on Jesus because he knew that only Jesus could do it. The Bible goes on to say that the Holy Spirit was upon him. How many know that you need the Holy Spirit to wait? Jesus told his disciples, wait in Jerusalem until you receive the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is who enables you to wait and it was the Holy Spirit that revealed to him, watch what he said, the Holy Spirit told Simeon this, this is amazing, that he would not die until he seen the Lord's Messiah. Simeon, I am preserving your life and you will not die. Until you see the Lord face to face. I am preserving you long enough 
for you to meet Jesus. That was what the Holy Spirit told him. The Bible says in verse 27, that day the Spirit led him to the temple. Where did it lead him? To the temple. The Spirit of the Lord led him to where? The temple. Just like the same Spirit of the Lord drew you here today. Give yourself a pat, pat on the back. You obey the Spirit of God today. It brought you to the temple of God. And so when Mary and Joseph came to the temple to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. And he took the child in his arms and praised God. He took the baby Jesus in his arms and he praised God. And he said, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace. As you have promised, I have seen your salvation. And so for all those minutes that he waited, for all those hours that he spent in Jerusalem, for well, all the months that he spent in the city turned into years that he spent waiting on the Lord. And I'm sure that people thought he was crazy for waiting on God. Why are, are you, do you never leave the city? Why, uh, Simeon, are you always in the temple? Uh, tell us why you are always going to church. You're always reading your Bible. You're always praying. You're always giving. What is wrong with you, Simeon? because no one is doing that and Simeon must have replied I am waiting on the Lord and I know that you might not understand that on the outside but I got something going on on the inside that you know not of I got the Holy Spirit talking to me and he's telling me to wait upon Jesus so I refuse to leave That's what some of you need to say to the devil. I refuse to leave my marriage. I refuse to leave this relationship. I refuse to leave this ministry. I can't leave. You couldn't make me leave if you tried. I don't know if they asked me to leave here, what would happen? I would about tie myself up here or something. Until I see Jesus, until I touch Jesus, until I hold Jesus, I am determined to wait. People don't understand me and my wife sometimes. Because we will die waiting on the Lord. And people might, will say, well, you're crazy for waiting. You're crazy for waiting on a God that you cannot see. You're going to die waiting. But you don't understand. I should have been dead a long time ago. But God has preserved my life. God has destined me to, li to live. I got a promise from the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost 
is the one who told me that I will live and not die until I see the salvation of the Lord. So I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to sit right here and wait for Jesus. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by the obstacles or the circumstances. I have a word from God and I'm not going anywhere. I don't care how much you shake me. I don't care if you try and break me. I am going nowhere, but I'm waiting on Jesus. It don't matter what the devil does or doesn't do. It doesn't matter what other people say or what people don't say. You stay solid. You stay positioned. You stay fixed in the house of the Lord. You become immovable, steadfast. You don't run from church. You run to church. You don't run from God. You run into the arms of God. Especially when times get hard. Because he promised me that if I wait on him, if I wait on him, he promised me, if I wait, that he would renew my strength. That he would give me power. That he would help me to overcome. That he would build up inside of me a strength that, that I don't have yet. But I need to wait upon him. Wait for the answer to come. Don't move prematurely. Don't be desperate. That's why I, I tell some of the girls that will come, Pastor Joe, I think I'm ready to date. Well, uh, well, whatever you do, make yourself a hard catch. Don't be desperate. Don't be caught texting them every 10 minutes. Don't be talking to him more than you talk to Jesus. Don't be a hard catch. Make it difficult for him. Don't make it easy for him. Make him wait. Apart from Simeon, watch this. Apart from this man, Simeon, a majority of God's people who are waiting for God to come save them, they miss their opportunity to be saved. A majority of God's people waiting for God to come and save them missed their opportunity to be saved. They missed God because God answered in a way that they were not expecting him to answer. Could it be that the answer to everything that you're waiting for has already come? And you just failed to realize it. You're waiting on the husband. You're waiting on a wife. You're waiting on a car. You're waiting on a house. You're waiting on, on money. You're, you're waiting on a, a career. You're waiting on all these things. But really the answer to all that you're waiting for is found in Jesus. <laughs> the reason why we wait is because God wants to be more than enough. God wants to be all that you need. God wants to be your sustainer. God wants to be your husband. God wants to be uh, everything that you desire. And he said, if you desire me, all these other things I'll freely give you. 
And so maybe you are waiting for God and he's really waiting for you. To get the order correct. Because you're all out of order. To get the priorities correct. Because you have to get to a point. This is the first commandment. You have no other gods before me. If you can do the one, you can do them all. But you got to get this one correct. God first before everything. Jesus is enough for me. I don't need anything else. All I need is Jesus. I'm okay right here in the house of the Lord with Jesus. I don't need to be at a nightclub. I don't need to be at the sports arena. I don't need to be at a car show. I just need to be right here with God. That is enough. And I'll close with this. You go ahead and stand. We'll bring the worship team back out. I know it's only 819, but I think you waited long enough. Some of you got a date with a cheeseburger. I know. I see you out there. I see the way without a sticker. In and out on Fifth Street. I see it. Some of you blow right past me and run me off the road. Right. Sorry about that, Pastor. <laughs> this man, Simeon, is amazing because he was waiting for the first Christmas. The very first Christmas. And Christmas is right around the quarter. So we need to get the order right. God before everything. God in my home. Some of us need to turn our home into a place for God. God before everything. We have so many things for you to get involved in. So many things. We're a church on the move. Because we serve a God who's on the move. If I would paint a picture of what our church is like, people ask me, what is your church like? Well, we have ex-prostitutes at our church. We got ex-murderers at our church. We got ex-drug addicts at our church. We got some adulterers at our church. I said, and that's just the staff. Help us, Jesus. But if I was to define our church and attach body parts to it, I would say we are a heart with feet. And there are so many things that your feet can run to. Got so many things going on. You can go give out toys. You can be part of discipleship. All these kids' world, youth programs, all these things for you to minister and put God first. What a blessing that is. It's a tremendous blessing. And I know that Simeon must have said... 
when he was holding Jesus. He may I hold a little cute little Jesus. Looking at him. He must have said, I have seen your salvation. I can see it. My eyes are open now. I can see the salvation of the Lord. And it is so precious and so beautiful, so wonderful, so comforting. I've seen it. And he said, and because I've seen it now, sovereign Lord, I could rest. Because you cannot rest until you meet Jesus. And God has gracefully prolonged your life. Some of you should have been dead a long time ago. Because the devil been trying to kill you for a long, long time. But you have a God who's rich in mercy. And his mercies are renewed day by day. And he has preserved you. He has sustained you. You should have overdosed. But God resuscitated you. You should have been murdered. But God delivered you. You should still be in jail. But God bailed you out. A lot of things we don't deserve. But God has given you this petition to enter into salvation and rest. And it's not just for you. It's for your entire household. We need to be very strategic this year on sharing salvation with our households. Because God is getting ready to enter into the homes in San Bernardino. I know he started with us, but there are more homes that he wants to enter into. He wants to take over houses, families. And we're going to see the greatest revival that the nation has ever seen. And so if you're here today and you're waiting on the Lord, we'll invite our altar team up. If you're waiting on the Lord, well, the waiting is over. Jesus is here. Jesus is come in the flesh. God is here so that you don't have to wait anymore. And so all you need to do is get out of your chair and come to this altar and receive Jesus. Receive your answer. Receive the hope for your life. With every head bowed and every eyes closed, if you're here in this room and you're ready to recommit or commit for the first time your life to God, to enter into the rest, to receive salvation. Here's what we want to do. I just want you to just raise your hand right now. Say, Pastor Joe, that's me. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I see that hand back there. I see more hands back there. And I want you to do one thing. Your hand's up. I just want you to come forward right now. Make your way out of your seat and come forward. God said, if you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. <clears throat> if you declare me before your brethren, I will declare you before the Father. So make a public stand for your decision today. God bless you. For the, everyone else, if you need some prayer, maybe you're waiting on God to do something. You want to agree with somebody. I'm just going to invite you up too right now. Whether it be a healing, whether it be a deliverance, salvation for someone in your family, you can make your way to the altar here right now. Father, we bless you. We praise your name. We glorify your name. The matchless name 
of Jesus. We give you honor, Lord. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're just waiting on the Lord. God will wait for you. God will wait for you. We're not in a hurry. Thank you, Jesus. Would you stretch your hands towards these that came, came forward here tonight? If you came forward here, we're so proud of you. We're so proud of you and your decision to follow God. So proud of you. We're honored to be able to pray with you. If you don't have a home church, well, this is your home church. You're home now. Amen? You're home now. So let's repeat this prayer together and say, Jesus, I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. And I receive you as Lord of my house. And so my children will be saved. My family will be saved. My entire home will be saved because of this moment. I give my life to you. Forgive me, Jesus, of all my sins. Wash them away by the power of your blood. And I receive your forgiveness, your grace, and your mercy, your love, and your kindness over my life. I am free because you set me free. And I ask you, Jesus, to send me your Holy Spirit to help me live a life that glorifies you. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Let's give God a big shout of praise. So the next thing we got on our calendar is Saturday, correct? Saturday's Adopt-A-Block. We're going out in the community. We're handing out all these gifts. That's where we're going to start. And at every campus you go next Sunday, this Sunday, you'll be able to receive gifts for children who are registered. So please, please come, put it on your calendars, and let's get ready to just serve the Lord this Christmas. Amen? Well, we love you guys. God bless you. God bless our online community. Thank you for coming tonight. Greet somebody as you leave. God bless you.